Let's talk about tennis elbow. Have you ever wondered why high level tennis players or elite level tennis players never get tennis elbow? And when I say never, I'm sure there's a few cases here and there, but 99.99% of those type of players don't suffer from tennis elbow. But yet at the recreational level, I've read recently that 50% of recreational tennis players worldwide suffer from tennis elbow. Just go to your local club, take a look. You're gonna see that most players playing with that bandage around their elbow. This is something that is a big problem anywhere in the world. And the reason why high level players and elite level players don't get tennis elbow is because they don't use the arm in isolation. So when you hit a ball as a high level player, there's an effortlessness to that ball being struck. Some people confuse this with relaxation and it's not relaxation, but rather the entire body working in perfect harmony and unison to help the arm out. On the other hand, recreational players often use the arm in isolation. So they don't use their body to help the arm out and they're overusing the arm. The arm is working overtime and naturally there is a chance that you can develop tennis elbow when you play tennis in such a way. Also, high level players, elite level players make contact really well. So it's gonna be a rare circumstance when players are gonna make contact around the frame. And here are the facts. When you make contact with the ball around the frame, it's gonna hurt your arm. Your arm is gonna absorb the entire shock of the ball. And for you guys that already have arm pain, you know that when you hit one with the frame, the pain is much worse. But interestingly, it's also the case when you start hitting balls off center. So when you start hitting balls around the frame, anywhere along here, this is gonna have a worse impact on your arm. And high level players, elite level players, they make good contact. I'm not saying that they make perfect contact every time. They do frame as well and they do hit balls off center as well, but they're pretty good with hitting the ball exactly in the sweet spot. And therefore the stress on their arm is a lot less than it is at the recreational level. So let's talk about causes of tennis elbow. There's gonna be four main causes and one additional cause of tennis elbow. And they are the following. It's your technique. And when it comes to technique, it's usually your backhand side that's affected because when you hit a backhand volley, a slice backhand or a one-handed backhand, all the impact is absorbed on the outside of the arm as opposed to a serve where you're hitting the ball like this or a forehand where it's more on the inside of the arm. So a golfer's elbow is more common when it comes to the forehand and the serve, but this doesn't mean that players who have tennis elbow don't experience pain when they hit serves and forehands. Once you have tennis elbow, it's gonna hurt regardless of what shot that you're hitting. But as far as the technique is concerned, when you have poor form on your one-handed backhand volley, your one-handed backhand slice, and your regular one-handed backhand, this can be a cause for tennis elbow. It's not gonna be as much of a cause when you hit the backhand with two hands. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that you can't get tennis elbow from the forehand and the serve. Yes, you can get tennis elbow from a poor technique on those strokes as well. The second cause of tennis elbow is gonna be your racket. And one thing that a lot of people do wrong is play with the wrong grip size. So number one, you have to have the correct grip size. And I have a racket here where I can show you that the grip is way too small. So you can see that I'm gripping this racket all the way around and there's absolutely no gap between my fingers and the palm of my hand. You can see that I can't put my other index finger in this gap. So when you do a test like this, you have to make sure that there is enough space where you can comfortably fit your index finger of your non-dominant hand inside this gap. If you put your fingers all the way around and the fingers are almost touching your palm, the grip is too small. On the other hand, if the gap is too big, now you might have a grip that is too large. In my experience at the recreational level, I see more players who play with a grip that's too large than too small. So it is extremely important that you play with the correct grip size. Now the connection between tennis elbow and grip size is the following. When the grip size is too big, you can't wrap your hand all the way around and you're gonna be squeezing a lot tighter than you normally would to get stability on the racket. So playing with a grip size that's too large is far worse than playing with a grip that's too small. Now, when it comes to a grip that's too small, this is less of a problem. And some players can play with a grip quite comfortably that's too small. And the only issue when it comes to your stability is your thumb. So what should usually happen with your thumb is that it lays on your middle finger. But when the grip is too small, you can see that the 
thumb overlaps the middle finger and this could cause a little bit of instability. So now that you know how to find the correct grip size, let's talk rackets. And the word that's going to help you out the most in solving this tennis elbow mystery is going to be responsiveness. If you happen to have tennis elbow, I want you to try to play with a racket that is more responsive. Now, unfortunately, the advice that you're going to hear about rackets is to do the exact opposite and play with a racket that's less responsive. In other words, a racket that's softer, more flexible. Responsive rackets tend to be a little bit stiffer. And the topic of stiff versus flexible rackets is a very confusing one because the rackets that are marketed as the most arm friendly happen to be the softest rackets because many people relate the softness of the frame with it being better for the arm while a stiffer frame is supposed to be worse for the arm. But I want you to take a look at the rackets that I'm about to list. One of the most popular recreational level rackets in the history of tennis is the head TIS6. Now this racket is 252 grams strong. It's a 115 square inch head. It's got a 75 stiffness rating. So it's one of the stiffest rackets ever made. And it's also eight points head heavy. The Dunlop LX1000 is 115 square inches in head size. It's 269 grams strong. It's got a 75 stiffness rating and is six points head heavy. The Focal V-Cell 2 is 283 grams strong. It's 115 square inches in racket head size. It's got a 71 stiffness rating and it's two points head heavy. The Hyper Hammer 5.3 stretch oversize is 255 grams strong. It's got a 70 stiffness rating. It's got 110 inch racket head size. It's eight points head heavy and it's also longer than the average racket at 27.5 inches. So when you take a look at these four rackets, what do you associate them with? Well, you associate them with low level recreational players who tend to be a little bit older. Now, why in the world would these type of players be playing with these rackets? Well, I'm gonna tell you why, because the rackets that are listed are some of the most powerful rackets that are available on the market. In other words, they are extremely responsive. When you hit a ball with one of these rackets that's extremely light, that's also head heavy, that's also stiff, the ball will shoot off the racket with very little effort required. And for that reason, these are some of the most arm friendly rackets on the market. If they weren't, then players of that caliber that are older with less of an athletic ability wouldn't be playing with them. And when you look at the marketing of arm friendly rackets, it gets very confusing. And what I'm saying makes absolutely no sense. And I'm going to prove this to you by reading one random racket from Head called the Head Instinct, which is a great racket, by the way. So the Head Instinct Mid Plus has the following description. This arm friendly player's racket is defined by its raw speed, easy power and spin friendly target. The Instinct Mid Plus also packs a 64 RA stiffness, making it one of the most arm friendly rackets in its class. And as you probably know, most rackets that are used by pros, for example, have different versions of them. Sometimes three, four, five different versions. And the Head Instinct also has another version called the Head Instinct Power 115. The Instinct Power 115 is one of the most powerful rackets in Head's arsenal. The Instinct Power 115 is simply a great option for any player who wants maximum comfort and power. So here's the confusion. We got one racket that's more flexible, that's supposed to be good for the arm. And we have one racket that gives the player a tremendous amount of power, but it is more on the stiff side. But the stiffness is not the only reason why the head 115 power is so powerful. It's the entire combination. It's very similar to the other rackets that I showed you. So it's got a head size that's 115 square inches. It's 27.7 inches in length, so a little bit longer than a standard racket. It's
147 grams strong. It's also nine points head heavy, and it's got a stiffness rating of 70. And now let's compare it to the supposed arm friendly racket, which has a head size of 100 square inches. It's 27 inches in length. It's got a strong weight of 318 grams. It's also four points head light, and it's got a stiffness rating of 64. So here's the problem. While there's gonna be recreational players that can definitely pull off the head instinct racket and it's a great racket if somebody is suffering from tennis elbow and i'd have to give them advice on which racket to play with i would suggest the head power over the head instinct mp for the simple fact that there's going to be less effort required to hit the ball despite the fact that the other racket is softer it's got many other factors that are going against it number one it's shorter it's got a smaller head size. More of the racket's weight is towards the handle and it's less stiff. So what will happen when players use that racket is gonna be a feeling of less responsiveness. In other words, less power, more effort required to hit the ball, which can translate into arm problems. And look, I understand that it makes a lot of sense to people that a softer racket is better for the arm. But you have to understand that even in the wooden racket era, these rackets had a stiffness rating of somewhere around 30. You still had people with tennis elbows. So a wooden racket is unbelievably flexible, nothing like the modern graphite rackets that people were still getting tennis elbow. So the tennis elbow problem is a very complex one. And it can be super confusing because I have many, many students who play with all kinds of rackets. I even have some students that play with the RF97, which is a racket that's 340 grams unstrung, which is something that I generally wouldn't recommend to the recreational level, but there are some recreational levels who can pull this racket off without any problems. And there's gonna be other rackets that professional players play with that are used at the recreational level where there's absolutely no arm issues whatsoever. So my advice to everyone watching is the following. If you like the way you play, with your current racket. And if you're playing pain-free, there's absolutely no reason to switch. Understand that professional level players do not switch rackets very frequently. They get them painted and the new models that are coming out, these are not the actual rackets that professional players are playing with. Back in the day, when you looked online, you used to say, this racket is used by its so-and-so player. Now it says it's endorsed by such and such players so understand that players don't switch rackets very often and you shouldn't either and whatever racket it is it doesn't matter you stick with it however if you have problems with your arm or if you're not playing well here's what i want you to do and look i know a lot of you guys that watch my videos are really good players four or five levels some are five oh and a lot of you guys are really good four o's as well and you are maybe too good to play with the rackets that I mentioned in the beginning, those super oversized rackets that seniors play with or ladies. These rackets might be too lively for you and you're gonna have a difficult time controlling the ball. So that's not a solution for you because you don't wanna lose your level of play. So here are the things that you're gonna do if you are experiencing elbow pain. You're gonna try to increase the head size of your racket. You're gonna Try to go to 100. If you're already playing with 100, try to go to a, something over 100. Why is that? Because a larger head size is gonna give you more power. A larger sweet spot gives you more power. What else are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna try to find a racket that's more head heavy. Why? Because when the racket is head heavy, it's going to give you more power. When the racket is more head light, it's gonna give you less power. Yes, the maneuverability is gonna increase, but there's gonna be generally less power in your strokes. Another thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna reduce the weight of your racket by a little bit. So if you're playing with a racket that's 330 grams, maybe you're playing with a racket that's used on a tour, and you have arm pain, you try to go down to a racket that's 300. The same can be said for a racket that's 300, which is giving you arm pain, you try to go down to a racket that's 270. And most importantly, you're gonna to try to find a racket that's a little bit stiffer. So if you're playing with a racket that's got a 60 RA rating, you're gonna to try to find yourself a racket with a 65 rating. If you play with a racket that's rated at 65, you're gonna to try to find yourself a racket that's rated 
around 70 and you have to make sure that you use all these factors when you're making your selection of a racket that's going to help your tennis up but it's not going to do you any good if you leave out the weight of a racket if you grab a racket that's 330 grams with a 70 ra that's going to absolutely destroy your arm so the entire picture is important and what are we looking for we are looking for the racket to help you out to make your life easier on the court so that you don't have to exert as much energy and hopefully you can get rid of your tennis elbow so let's say you see a professional player's racket that you really like and you would like to play with it but the version that's labeled as the version that's used by the pros is usually the first racket that pops up so let's just select the yonex v core 98 and let's take a look at the specs so what you will see here is that this racket is 323 grams strong it's six points headlight it's got a stiffness of 62 and it's also 98 inches in head size and now within the same line of rackets you usually scroll all the way down and there's going to be a racket that's labeled l for light and most versions of rackets that the pros use that are labeled lighter will have completely different specs so let's take a look at the yonex v core 100 l and we'll see how this racket differentiates from the pro version so the head size is a little bit bigger at 100 square inches it's one point headlight so it's definitely not as headlight as the other racket its stiffness is 66 so it's definitely stiffer than the pro version and most importantly the strong weight is 298 grams this racket is going to be a lot more playable for the recreational level than the original version especially if you are suffering from pain in your elbow so what you can simply do is make a switch from the tour version to a lighter version and generally most rackets it doesn't matter what company it is will have completely different specs that are more suited for the recreational level and could possibly reduce your tennis elbow pain now the third and fourth cause of tennis elbow is going to be the strings that you play with and the tension and i recommend a monofilament polyester string well, why do i do that because just like the rackets these strings are going to be more responsive in other words you're looking for a string that's extremely powerful and not so dead when i worked at the club in germany with my dad we helped hundreds of players get rid of the tennis elbow with this particular string this is the polystar natural polyester string if you take a look at the string it's extremely firm it's a very stiff but it's unbelievably responsive and you're probably wondering nick i watched your top five recreational level strings video and you didn't put the string in the top five i want to tell you why i'm going to read the description of the polystar classic string which by the way is a string made in germany the entire manufacturing process is done in germany so this is a super high quality string polystar classic is a monofilament copolyester all-round tennis string continuously improved in the last 30 years with proven performance remember what i keep telling you guys that the strings continue to change even if it's the same type of string and companies are very vague on how they're changing the strings they're very vague on the descriptions of what type of materials are in the string and we are the ones who are suffering from this because it's not the same material as it used to be so for that reason i don't like the current version of polystar and that's why i didn't put it in my top five but despite that i'll still put it in a top 10 it's a phenomenal string for the recreational level why because on a responsiveness scale from 1 to 10 i'm going to rate the polystar classic an 8 out of 10. what i don't like about the new version of the polystar classic is that it doesn't perform that great with low tension and i'm the type of player who likes to play with low tension so when i string it in the mid 30s that's what i like to teach with and when i string it in the low 40s i don't get quite the control that i get from the kirschbaum super smash so for that reason i stopped playing with the polystar classic polyester string but it was my string of choice for 20 years and in the description it says the elastic characteristic of natural gut strings has been integrated into our classics attributes and this is where everybody's going to get confused how can a string that's so stiff also be elastic well, i can tell you that it's possible if it's the correct polyester 
string. Yes, there are polyester strings out there that are incredibly dead and are very low power, but there are not as many as they used to be 30 years ago, but there are still some polyester strings that are stiff, but they're also elastic. And how do I know that? Well, listen, these hands right here, they have a pretty good feel because I've been hitting tennis balls my whole life. And what I look for is the actual sound. So when I hear the sound of the strings, and this particular racket is strong with olive power and natural gut in the mains, just like Roger Federer likes it. And you, you hear this? It's a thud, okay? It is a thud sound. And I wish I could show you the old sound, but I can't because I can't find those strings. It was that dinging sound, that high pitch sound of the polyester, which meant that these strings were stiff, but they were very elastic and they were unbelievably responsive, probably a 10 out of 10 on the responsiveness scale. And these were the type of strings that my dad and I used for the recreational level in a thin gauge. And I can tell you that people with tennis level would come to my dad and I would string the racket and people would experience a lessening in the pain and sometimes the pain would go away completely. Why? Because there was less effort required to hit the ball. So. You have to understand that when I make my gear videos, when I make my equipment videos, this is all based on my real life experiences in the tennis industry with players. I'm not making this up out of the clear blue sky. And look, a lot of you guys will disagree with me, but not all. I receive a lot of messages from players that have been helped by my string suggestions, especially with my recommendation of stringing rackets loosely, which is one of the biggest factors when we're talking about tennis elbow. Rackets are strung way too tight, and generally you can string in the 40s without any problems with polyester strings. You can even go in the 30s. It depends a little bit on what type of strings you're using, and I recommend that you watch my top five video where I go into a little bit more detail about strings. But I'm gonna read you the following comment from one of my viewers. After reading through the physics and technology of tennis, I believe Nick is completely right about stiff being more arm friendly. The book says that soft rackets vibrate more than stiff rackets due to the extra bending and warping back and forth on impact and longer durations of vibrations. Soft rackets require you to hit harder due to energy being lost to bending. It concludes that the most arm friendly setup is a stiff racket strung at low tension. Look, I have not read this book, but it appears to agree with my theory about stiff rackets, but it's not just about stiff rackets. I hope that now you understand the complexity of rackets. There are many different factors that you have to consider when selecting a racket. And if you happen to have tennis elbow and you do everything that I discussed in today's video, there is a really good chance that your tennis elbow problems are gonna disappear. Now, I'm gonna close this video off with the racket that you guys are probably gonna bring up in the comments, and that's the Wilson Clash. And I do have some students that play with the Wilson Clash. And while this is a phenomenal racket, I do like the looks of this racket. It's a beautiful racket, especially the all black version that just came out. And it plays really nice. It does have pretty good pop because it has a wide beam, but it's a racket that's extremely soft. And the marketing is such that this is sold as the most arm friendly racket in the world. And I'm gonna have to disagree with that. While I do think that a lot of recreational players are gonna enjoy playing with this racket if that's their preference of play. So again, understand that all modern rackets are gonna be suited to some of you guys. There's gonna be vast differences on your personal preferences when it comes to rackets. That's why there's so many options out there and you see so many players that play with different rackets. So this is a phenomenal racket. But again, my worry is that when somebody has tennis elbow and switches to the Wilson Clash, I do not think that it's going to have the healing qualities that are promised with the marketing. It's 100 in square inches. It's 312 grams strong. It's seven points head light, and it's got a stiffness rating of 57. Now I understand that there are different clashes out there. This is the black version. And when I look at these numbers, I'm worried that this racket is gonna be good for someone that has tennis elbow. Have some players gotten rid of tennis elbow with the clash? I'm sure they have, but it also depends what racket they use prior to this one. Maybe they used a racket with a thin beam that was extremely 
heavy, and then they switch to the Clash, which is obviously more playable, and all of a sudden they feel more comfort and the tennis elbow pain goes away. So it's a super complex topic, and we need to see the whole picture to understand what is going on. Sometimes, which is the last cause of tennis elbow, it is absolutely impossible to establish where the pain come from, and in these cases it could be from another activity altogether. I've heard some people do work at their house and all of a sudden they get tennis elbow from that. So it's possible that the tennis elbow problem can also be not related to tennis. So what you're going to do is you're going to ask yourself these questions. What happened? Was there a point where you did something different where your arm started to hurt? And if you know the answer to that, you're going to go back to the way you used to do things. Now the tricky thing with tennis elbow is that even though you go back to your old setup, the elbow pain persists and now it might be time to look into a new racket, into a new string with the recommendations that are provided in today's video.